Welcome to the Radiology Review Podcast, your on-the-go source for radiology education with your host, Dr. Matt Covington, a board-certified radiologist. Please follow the podcast on Twitter at RadRevPodcast. Send emails to theradiologyreview at gmail.com or visit the website theradiologyreview.com. Welcome back to the Radiology Review Podcast. This episode will cover CT and MRI imaging artifacts. This is not a comprehensive review, but rather a review of some of the most high-yield artifacts that can occur on CT and MRI that tend to be tested on exams like the core exam. I will make a free downloadable study guide on this topic available on my website, theradiologyreview.com, as soon as this episode is posted, so go ahead and check that out. Let me take a moment to remind you that as of this episode posting, you can save some money on a Board Vitals or MRI online subscription by typing in discount code RADREVIEW, R-A-D-R-E-V-I-E-W. And I mentioned this quick ad because that is literally something that can save you money. Also, check out RADREV Podcast on Twitter and Instagram, where I am currently posting on most days tips and facts that can be helpful for the core exam in particular. Without further ado, let's get into the questions and answers for this episode. First question, what is the cause of beam hardening artifact on CT? Let me take a moment just to specify that for most imaging artifacts, it is useful to know the cause of the artifact as well as measures that can be taken to prevent or reduce the artifact. And we will cover many of these on this episode. The question is, what is the cause of beam hardening artifact on CT? The answer is that high density tissue or material attenuates lower energy photons preferentially, thereby selecting higher energy photons for the image reconstruction and this process whereby high-density structures block the lower-energy photons or absorb them, you can think, and the higher-energy photons are allowed to pass and reach the detector, that is hardening the CT beam. Because image reconstruction assumes that all beams or projections have the same beam hardness, you end up with artifacts when the beam hardness differs from what the image reconstruction algorithm is expecting. The result is that you can get both bright and dark streaks around really high density objects on CT images and that is the result of beam hardening. Next question, how can beam hardening artifact be reduced? Several methods exist to reduce beam hardening artifact. These include selecting higher KVP settings to allow more energetic beams to travel through and not be absorbed as much by high-density objects, as well as using metal artifact reconstruction algorithms or other beam hardening corrections. Next question, what causes a ring artifact on CT? For board exams, first consider a detector problem if you see an image that shows a ring artifact on a CT image. With ring artifact, this can result from a detector problem with poor calibration. A poorly calibrated detector can be one cause of ring artifact on CT. Other causes can be contrast material or other debris that can be present on the detector covering or imaging with insufficient dose. To troubleshoot ring artifact, clean the detector and call your medical physicist to troubleshoot and potentially recalibrate the system if ring artifact persists. Next, what is the underlying cause of volume averaging artifact on CT? When a voxel on a CT image is large enough to contain tissues of different attenuation values within that same voxel, the average attenuation of the tissues in that voxel is what will be depicted on the image. This can create situations where anatomic areas appear slightly higher or lower in density than truth, B 
because what is being shown on the CT image is the averaging effect of immediately adjacent tissues at tissue density interfaces. This can be especially pronounced in places where high and low density objects are in close approximation, such as the lungs, where you can have high density material in arteries, such as contrast material, immediately adjacent to low density air-filled lung parenchyma. To reduce this artifact, one approach is to use thinner image slices to reduce the voxel size, as well as using narrower detector channels. Next, what is truncation artifact on CT and how do you reduce this? Truncation artifact results when a portion of the body being imaged exceeds the field of view of CT. The artifact typically appears as curvilinear bright bands on the edges of the image where the body has been cut. So for example, if a portion of the arm is extending beyond the field of view, you would see a bright curvilinear band on the edge of the arm right where the arm otherwise extends beyond the field of view. To reduce truncation artifact, an obvious approach is to widen the field of view if that is possible. Otherwise, try to see if there is a different way to position the patient better within the center of the gantry or otherwise shift anatomy such as arms around, perhaps raising or lowering the arms to help include the entire anatomy within the field of view. Next, what is zipper artifact on MRI and how do you reduce this? Zipper artifact results from radio frequency interference, typically from an extrinsic radio frequency signal that occurs classically in the phase encoding direction. This appears as alternating light and dark bands, similar to a zipper across the image. There are a few classic, commonly tested causes for zipper artifact on board exams. First, the door to the MRI scanner room not being closed tight or otherwise having a damaged or faulty seal is a classic scenario that is tested in terms of the door not being closed or sealed sufficient to block radio frequency signals from entering the MRI scanner room. Otherwise, look for some sort of breach of the Faraday cage around the MRI scanner room or otherwise some sort of electronic device that has actually been physically located within the room that is giving off radio frequency signals, classically some kind of patient monitoring device that may have accompanied the patient into the MRI scanner room that is thereafter going to cause zipper artifact on the MRI image. Zipper artifact is a particularly high yield entity for radiology board exams. Be prepared to take questions on this. Next, what is Gibbs artifact on MRI? Gibbs artifact is also a highly tested MRI artifact because it can appear similar to a spinal cord syrinx due to an artifactual linear hyperintense signal that can be seen near the spinal cord cerebrospinal fluid interface. These interfaces cause alternating high and low bands of signal at high contrast tissue interfaces due to limited sampling when using Fourier transform analysis. Now, to be completely upfront, I am not an MRI physicist, and I cannot tell you much more about this artifact other than what I have already said. Gibbs artifact is more common in the phase and code direction, as this is often the step that is more undersampled in order to scan faster. Let me take a moment to simply say that I am a clinical radiologist and not an MRI physicist, and it is very possible that you can ask me questions that are deeper than my understanding of some of these artifacts. My goal here is to simply present material that is commonly tested on radiology board exams at the approximate level of which the test questions often require you to know. 
you can go very deep in the woods on all of these artifacts. And if you have specific questions, I will likely refer you to the MRI physics expert at your institution or training center because they might be able to give you a more comprehensive view and answer than I am actually capable of doing. Let's move on to the next question. What is pulsation artifact on MRI and how do you reduce this? Pulsation artifact occurs when pulsation of a vessel causes misplacement of some of the signal from the pulsating vessel elsewhere on the MRI image in the phase encode direction. I want to emphasize that for many of these artifacts, it is important to know the phase and frequency encode direction. There may be some exceptions to the rules for some of these, but generally I'm pointing out which direction is more common. And with pulsation artifact, this is typically in the phase encode direction. For example, with pulsation artifact from the aorta, a similar sized round structure to the aorta will be imaged elsewhere than the actual aorta and will be positioned directionally along the phase encode direction. So if the phase encode direction is from the front to back of the patient, pulsation artifact would show a round structure very similar in appearance to the aorta that would be misplaced somewhere on the image in the front to back direction. To reduce pulsation artifact, use faster MRI pulse sequences, increase the sampling, use pre-saturation bands, and or consider switching the phase encode direction. Next, what is susceptibility artifact on MRI and how do you reduce this? Susceptibility artifact is a black or extremely low signal abnormality on MRI that surrounds a material that causes local field inhomogeneities, such as blood, metal, and so forth. Another name for susceptibility artifact is blooming artifact. When these materials cause local field inhomogeneities, you lose MRI signal due to accelerated dephasing of spins. To reduce susceptibility artifact, some sequences, such as spin echo sequences, are superior. In general, sequences that reduce the echo time will have less susceptibility artifact. Next question, what is aliasing artifact on MRI and how do you reduce this? Aliasing artifact is also known as wraparound artifact and occurs when anatomy not included in the sampling field of view ends up on the opposite side of the image. It is really key to know what this artifact looks like, so look up aliasing artifact on MRI if you don't already know. This is also very highly tested. The cause of aliasing on MRI is when the field of view of MRI is smaller than the anatomy being imaged, and this artifact typically occurs in the phase encoding direction. To reduce this artifact, increase the field of view and or sampling bandwidth. Next, true or false? Magnetic field inhomogeneities in the main magnetic field can cause moire fringes. I think I said that right. I, I may have totally not said that correct. It is spelled M-O-I-R-E with an accent. Moire fringes. The answer is true. This artifact caused by interference patterns that both add and cancel this signal looks really cool in my opinion. Look it up so you know what this looks like on a board exam question. One cause of this artifact is a main magnetic field that has poor shimming which results in magnetic field inhomogeneities. How do you fix this? One approach is to use improved shimming to get a more homogeneous magnetic field. Next question, what is chemical shift artifact of the first kind? Chemical shift artifact of the first kind causes dark and bright borders around anatomic structures at interfaces of fat and soft tissue 
which is classically tested on the kidneys because chemical shift artifact of the first kind is often well depicted around the kidneys at the soft tissue fat interface. For example, you would see a bright border around the leftward aspect of both kidneys and a dark border around the rightward aspect of both kidneys. The cause is spatial misregistration that results from differences in the frequencies of precession at interfaces of fat and soft tissue. This often occurs in the frequency encoding direction, and this is minimized on MRI with fat saturation. Next, what is chemical shift artifact of the second kind? Let me take a moment to simply point out that if there are two of anything, the odds that you will be tested on the difference between these increases on board exams, and this is no exception. You do need to know what the difference is between chemical shift artifact of the first kind and chemical shift artifact of the second kind. Chemical shift artifact of the second kind causes the classic India ink artifact which is a characteristic dark border at interfaces of fat and soft tissue on MRI. This is most classically seen and tested on out-of-phase MRI images. Chemical shift artifact of the second kind results because the signals from fat and water at the interface partially cancel each other out, leading to focal signal loss. Next, how is MRI dielectric artifact commonly tested? Onboard exams look for the anatomically large abdomen with ascites that shows an MRI image with vague darkening in the center of the image on a 3 Tesla scanner. Basically, with MRI dielectric artifact, the radio frequency wavelength at 3T is about the same as the diameter of a large patient, and if ascites is present, this can cause signal interference and loss of signal centrally and peripheral brightening. Look up images of MRI dielectric artifact so you know what this classically looks like. And remember that this artifact is less common on a 1.5 Tesla scanner, so if you see an image with dielectric artifact on MRI on a 3 Tesla scanner, a potential fix is to image the patient on a 1.5 Tesla scanner in order to get better images and avoid that central darkening that is characteristic for MRI dielectric artifact. Now this artifact probably can happen in other scenarios than a large abdomen with ascites, but I suspect if you are tested on this artifact on a board exam, you are likely to be presented with that exact scenario of a large patient imaging the abdomen with presence of ascites when imaged on a 3 Tesla scanner. Last and final question for this episode. How is MRI magic angle artifact commonly tested? Magic angle artifact is classically tested on shoulder MRIs by showing what appears to be a tendon tear or tendinopathy of the supraspinatus tendon due to the MRI artifact that causes higher signal in the tendon in the specific setting where tendon molecules are precisely 54.74 degrees from the magnetic field, also called B0. This is most commonly tested on some sort of musculoskeletal MRI, where you have tendons that curve around a structure, and you will see brightening of the signal within the tendon within molecules that are located at precisely 54.74 degrees, apparently, from the main magnetic field. To evaluate for presence of MRI magic angle artifact, you should confirm for a real tendon abnormality versus magic angle artifact by seeing if there is evidence of signal abnormality on other MRI sequences, or if this is only seen on sequences with short echo times, such as T1, proton density, GRE, but not on T2 sequences. Other anatomic sites that can be prone to this artifact include the proximal posterior cruciate ligament, the peroneal tendons, 
and the triangular fibrocartilage complex. That is enough for now. I hope this episode was helpful for many of you. It may be helpful to download the free study guide on this topic that is available at theradiologyreview.com so that you can review this in written form as well. Keep up the good work and study hard. Remember, you have to study really hard to succeed on radiology board exams, so prepare to succeed. I will catch you on the next episode. Content of this podcast is provided for informal educational purposes only for radiology trainees and radiologists. Medical practitioners, please make your own independent assessment before suggesting a diagnosis or recommending any course of treatment. This podcast should not be used for self-diagnosis or self-treatment and is not a substitute for independent professional medical care. Please consult your own physician regarding any diagnosis, imaging interpretation, or course of treatment.